A few years ago, I put a new ceiling in my shop and I made a bunch of videos about that. If you want to see that, I've got a link to the playlist in the description. Anyway, I did that mainly for noise control here in my shop. Not noise control, I guess you could say, but reverb control. Before that, I had an awful problem in here with echo and it was ruining the audio and the videos. So that went a long way to fix that. Also, while I was at it, I figured I would improve the lighting by putting in these fluorescent fixtures up here. And at the time, their uh, LEDs were available, but they were still really expensive. So I went with this, which was cheaper at the time. And I figured at some point in time, I could convert them to LED when the price came down. In a recent video on my scrap bin channel, I talked about building a new shop up on back there, either that or building onto this one. After giving it a lot of thought, I've decided that if I do that, because I'm not absolutely certain I will at this point, it will be to build a new one out back and not build onto this at all. In the meantime, I do need to uh, continue working in the shop and one of the problems that I've had with these fixtures in particular is that in the winter time, because the temperature in here is not set to say room temperature, it's at five degrees Celsius. It takes time for these lights to come up to full brightness. So I come out here to film something and I have to wait until I'm absolutely certain that the lights are at full brightness before I set the exposure on the camera. Otherwise, I've got uh, things that are blown out. This has come back to bite me several times and it slows down things every time I come out here to do something quickly. I have to wait, you know, that extra time until the lights come up. It doesn't sound like a big deal until you have to do it over and over again. Anyway, so after that video, I got an email from Jim Uno uh, from American Green Lights asking if I would be interested in some of the ones that they make. And uh, because I'm very interested in changing these over, I said yes, send them out. And we originally discussed changing these troffer fixtures up here to put the things in. But while I was waiting for the products to come, I thought about it some more and I decided what would be better is if I made individual small fixtures that are four feet long that contain one LED strip and then I can put a lot of them in the ceiling rather than concentrate them in little areas and that way I'll have much more even lighting throughout the shop. So I was out here yesterday and I got started on it. I went and I got the materials that I need to make the fixtures are very simple and I even took the time to install one and this is where this one will go and I'm going to plug it in and show you what it looks like. So that is impressively bright and not only that it's the right color it's the right color temperature. This fixture up here is what you could call the prototype and it's made from steel stud that I bought at the home center and I just cut it in half. As this is the other half of the first stud that I cut for this. I've got 15 of these to make for the ceiling here. It's a big job. And I bought eight studs to do that with. And I bought extra cross tees also because you can see up here that there's an extra one right beside the fixture to finish it off and to support the ceiling tile on the other side. There's also a couple other things I have to do with this fixture up here. So I have to get it down again. And the first is to take off the stock wire that was on there and solder in one that's longer. Now I could just join this wire directly into the wire that's coming out and that would be fine, but it's actually easier and faster to solder it directly in. And that's what I did with the rest of the strip. So this wire that I'm using here has 18 gauge uh, individual wires in there. So I'm not going to lose any current from the power supply over to the uh, light strip. And the power supplies themselves, I got to put that in my mouth, have this quick connect thing on the end here. And it's got a bunch of pigtails on there with connectors on there already, which is convenient if you're doing it the way, um, if you have 
short runs and so on and so forth. But I'm going to take these out of here like so. And I'm going to keep them because I might need them at some point. But the wires will plug directly into those. Just push them in and then release the thing and they'll stay in there. And that's really handy. And then I can turn it on and see if it actually works. Now that I have the new wire attached, I can put the fixture back together and reinstall it back where it goes. Um, like I say, this is made from a steel stud and I'm gonna actually put one together uh, pretty soon. But I just wanted to show this is made from a single piece of steel stud and I cut this light uh, bezel, I guess you could say. I just bought this at the home center in a four by two sheet and cut it on the table saw. And the studs is they have a lip on the edge there that will hold this thing in there. So I just slide that in right through there. And then I can put the end caps on, but I wanted to do something different with the end caps here. Uh, I made these, I made a bunch of these actually. That's one thing that I do when I have a tedious job to do. Like I've got 15 of these to make, so they have 30 end caps that I have to put together and bend like so. So I went ahead and I cut all those out like this and I made a little you know, block that's the right size for bending it. And I put it up and then I got another idea about how it should look. I was thinking it would look cooler if it had round and on it like that, you know, something like uh, Death Star lighting, I guess you could say. A lot more tedious work for very little in return, but the rounded ends might, uh, well, they'll make me feel better about it anyway. Even though these won't be moved after I put them in, unless of course I build a new workshop and then I can put them in there. I want to make sure that this wire is not just held there by the solder on the strip. So I'm going to screw on this strap. I'm just going to drive in a couple of self-drilling sheet metal screws to hold that in place. With the end caps put on and the wire secured, I can put the cross T that I used to trim out the other side. And the way I'm holding this in place, of course, it sits in the T-bar up there but I'm also gonna drive a screw into the side of my fixture. <laughs> and I've got a single uh, sheet metal screw for that. Okay, so as promised, I'm gonna put one together now and I've got my half stud here. And like I said, I bought full studs. Full studs are eight feet long, 96 inches. And of course this grid up here is four feet by two feet, whatever. And so cutting it in half makes it fit in there. Except I didn't cut it exactly in half, I cut it a little bit short. Because if you measure the tiles, they're like a quarter inch shorter than four feet. And I made this to match. I actually made it a little bit shorter than that because I got end caps going on there as well. So in other words, why don't I just tell you the dimension? It's 47 and 11 sixteenths. And I cut it with my angle grinder here. I just made the marks on there with a marker and I cut it out nice and clean with this. You can cut it with snips like this, but what happens is it crushes together that lip and it also kind of deforms it. So you'll get a much cleaner cut with the angle grinder. The next step is to put the LED strip in there and studs have these holes in here. Um, the round ones are generally for wiring and these other ones here, these odd shaped ones are for a channel that'll go through, that'll lock the studs together. It's bridging is what it is. But I'm gonna use the round hole and I also use the odd shaped hole in the last one to run the wire through 
I'm actually going to cut that out. Hang on. I'm just going to take my snips and cut that completely out of there. So it's not in the way at all. And that way I don't have to run the wire through. I can just drop it in. And the idea is that the wire comes up outside of that, through that hole, just like that. So I'm just going to lay this in the track. Like so. I'm not going to measure it. I'm just going to eyeball it. That looks good. Doesn't have to be perfect. It should be close to the center and, and close to centered along the ends. And there's adhesive tape on the back, but I'm not going to use that. There's holes in these metal things to fasten it onto the stud. So I've got the block of wood here. What that does is it allows me to bend this thing around this uh, tightly so that it slips right onto the end of the stud without any complications. And now, of course, these things don't have to be perfect. That goes on to the end of the uh, stud like so and it goes right up tight against the back there and just flip it over now and then I can hold it tight in place to the end of the stud and to the sides and then drive in two more screws and those are what's going to hold it on. That's that side. Basically do the same for the other side but before I put it in I'm going to slide in the lens I flip the fixture upside down to slide the lens in. It goes in a lot quicker that way. And now I'm going to push the end cap on. These can be tricky because the end of the stud is sharp in places and it snags on the aluminum. And this is probably a good time to mention that I made these end caps out of aluminum flashing. But there's more specific details on this in the website article. And there's a link to that in the description. And to finish things up, once again, I'm going to screw a strap on that holds that wire in place. Okay, that's another one put together, the second one, and ready to install. I'm not going to install it yet, though. What I'm going to do <laughs> is finish cutting out all of the rest of these uh, pieces to semicircular like that. And then I'm going to put all of the fixtures together so that they're all ready to go. And then I'm going to start putting them in. Basically, I'm going to finish this end down here first so that I'll have space to move some of the junk that I have up in this end of the workshop up this way so I can get up into the ceiling up there. I'm not going to do any more of that in this video. I'm going to leave it off here with a few features, hopefully with it finished. And you'll see how the layout looks. And of course, in upcoming videos, you'll be able to see just how good the lighting is as well. Blah.